So we are going to see what Savitri is saying in response to the advances Satyavan was making towards her. And she says, and three point three four eight. And Savitri, musing still, replied to him, Speak more to me, speak more, O Satyavan. Speak of thyself and all thou art in him. I would know thee, Isaac. In that they were jailed together in the chamber of our souls. Speak till the light shall come into my heart, and my mood, mortal mind shall understand what all the doctors be in me. Be. It knows that thou art he, my spirit has sought, and his earth strongly resonates and form across the golden spaces of my body. Something definitely has happened in Savitri. There is not only the recognition of who Satyavan is, but also the light has come into her soul why she is here, what for she has come here, what this meeting or theirs is going to be. In fact, she says, speak more to me, speak more. Now, what does she want from him? What does she expect from him? Why she is insisting on that? What is it that was lacking in what he has told so far? That she is craving for that. And it is in response to that, so to say, the narrative, the story is being taken forward also. Essentially, we have here a very powerful line, in fact, a very powerful sentence earlier. Satyavan was killing Savitri. The spirit was saved. The body lost and new, lives still with death and ancient ignorance. This was, that was the dilemma. That was the difficulty he was facing. Yes, there is spiritual attainments, immortality, everything. Yes, those he has won. But what about the body? What about the physical? Physical gets left here, unattended. Unattended. Even Gita speaks of the physical, that this body is worn out and then it is discarded like a used plot. Is that really going to be to fix the body? Then it has been thrown away after it is used. Veena, Neva, Sanshi, that's what the Gita says. It becomes old, gets worn out, and it has been discarded. Is that going to be the fate of the body? In other words, Satyavan is convinced about what Gita says, but he is not happy with this aspect of the Gita. Why the body should be left out, abandoned? And it is in that sense he has moved forward from the time of the Gita. At that particular point of time, a certain spiritual development had to be done, it was being carried out. Now the spirituality has to enter into the physical. Immortality up there. All right, wonderful. Amrutas, it's okay. But what about the place here? What happens here? Is creation here? Is it to be abandoned? And 
given up and go and live up there. That has been the spiritual dilemma, and that is what Bhagavan is teaching until now. But the moment he looks at Savitri, he says, No, it cannot be so. Body lost and viewed until now. It cannot be. You have done. It means that there is a future for the body. There is a hope for the body. There is a meaning in the physical. And it is that which has to be established. The reality must come and dwell in the physical. That is what he sees at the very first glance at Savitri. The spirit was saved, yes, the body lost and lived, still and lived still with death and ancient ignorance. Now he speaks of ancient ignorance. Ancient ignorance, the power of the conscience. The first movement, first step, first progress which has been made from the unconscious is towards ignorance. Ignorance is the beginning or the process of evolution. And it is that ancient ignorance which is lost in the body which has to be tackled, which has to be handled. The inconscience was its base, the void is fate. So what happens finally? It gets dissolved in the void, it gets sterile into the void. Is that going to be the fate of the body? So he at once sees, no, it cannot be. This girl, this lady, this radiant person is there now and she has the key in her hand, in her soul, to change things. It is she who will do that thing. And it is in that context that he says, the child void shall be reborn. That is the crucial line. Child is void from Shunya, from zero, from nothing. The whole thing has come up. Satyavan's birth is from that. He is a permanent avatar in the void, stationed there in the void. And that child which has started appearing now in the creation, he should be reborn in God. Reborn not only in his soul, not only in his mind, not only in his vital life, but also in the physical, completely. In every respect, he will reborn in God. My matter, therefore, he says, my matter shall inherit the inconscient trance. My body, like spirit, shall be free. That is the whole thrust of his argument. It shall escape from death and ignorance. Again, he's repeating the same thing. Live still with death and ancient ignorance. The body shall escape death and ignorance. That is the hope, that is the expectation, that is the fulfillment of their meeting of Satyavan and Savitri. Now, when Savitri hears this thing, suddenly something in her wakes up. It is not only logic mental area, not just a lover's advance to a girl, not just that. It is a reality which has got awakened in the soul of her. Yes, why I am here for? The power of love which got awakened up in her has brought the full thrust, full impact, full force of her birth here. She found love and it is that love which has made her aware why she is here. Yes, body must be saved. And therefore, it is in that party, she says, Yes, tell me more, tell me more, what exactly you want. Body is all right. Perhaps body is the beginning of things. Once the body escapes death and ignorance, then the true divine manifestation becomes possible. So therefore, escaping death and ignorance is the beginning of things. You have come, it will escape. New manifestation, new creation, it is a starting thing. And that is what is going to happen. You have to say, speak more. Speak more to me, O Satyavan. Speak of thyself and all thou art within. I would know thee as if we had ever lived together. See, I mean, the identity of theirs 
has got kindled by the flame of the Lord. It is that which has kindled that thing in them. Yes, we have been there together in the chamber of our soul. It's not that we are waiting today, just now together, that we are seeing each other only for half an hour ago, we have come together. It's not that it has been there for a long It is that knowledge, that understanding, that perception, that realization which has come into our soul immediately. In other words, Savitri's yoga got kindled with that, has started with that. Her vision is already defined in this particular way. And in the course of time, as things will happen further, then that vision will have been carried further. Then Nara will come and say this, she that, etc. etc. She will do yoga, she will conquer death. All those things happen in the course of time. She will speak. Till the light shall come into my heart and my mood, mortal mind shall understand. She says that, well, hidden in my deep soul, I am aware of what I am, but I have become a human person. The human veil is there, human ignorance is there. It is that which really got removed by what you are telling me. So that is what. It has achieved. Such one utterance means that human veil which is there around the Savitri that has got in the spirit, has got removed immediately. Therefore, she said, and my mood and mortal mind shall understand in fact this mind which is coming at the way. And my mind will be convinced why it is there for what it has to do now. It knows that thou art he, my spirit has sought it. Stands here for deathless being in the previous sentence. What all the deathless being in me feels, it knows that deathless being in me, it knows that who you are, whom I have been seeking for. That deathless being knows it, that it stands for the deathless being. I mean, it's a strong in messages and form, yes. There are, I have been traveling for months and months and months from place to place, from kingdom to kingdom, lived in palaces, lived in villages, lived in farms, lived in temples, among various, various strong places and farms. I said, No, you are the one who has really kindled that thing in me across the golden spaces of my life. So, this is a kind of an invitation of. taking things forward. Body is there, how is it going to happen, what is the difficulty? And it is that now which will be sort of narrated, described, elaborated in the subsequent part of response which is coming from Satyavan. He says, and Satyavan, like a replying heart, to the insistent calling of the flow answered her questioning and let stream to her his heart in many colored waves of speech. Now actually in what Savitri has said there is not really any question as such. There is no question which she has put here and she says answered her questioning and let stream to her. She is not, she's not questioning him. She is sort of saying, yes, speak more to me. I would like to hear what you need to say. It is, it is very beautifully presented, you see that way. And he is replying to her like a heart. Heart responding to flute. Flute, well, has its own sweetness. The call of the flute player is always enchanting. It is the call to the divine. The call of the flute player is the call to the divine. Flute player's call, you see. Krishna's flute, that is the symbol of our music. So it is the calling of the flute to the divine, to the higher life, to the spiritual life, to the nobler life. It is that 
and she is asking that future tending what by she will be and therefore like a responding heart 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 many string instrument many voices many notes in fact it can learn over how many eight eight of hips a good heart it learn the strings sometimes there are how many 24 strings it there is and it can play uh, on eight of hips up and down in heart so you can go and jump to whatever level you like in whatever property you want to say and it is therefore the kind of a richness of response which is from some zero when he says heart yes so many instruments you play from here in the spot they will play in many colored way with the speech so many of the silver in those so many harmonies you will get into woman in that now many colored waves of speech actually we hear music with the ears with the blind ears <laughs> so to say we see things with deaf eyes we hear music with blind ears basically when there is music it is also accompanied by colors you don't see those colors music it is accompanied by colors by visions colors they start floating to the music you see so this is many colored way it is see that those colors those shades are also coming here many colored of course means also the richness of her also means the multiplicity of responses which can come from here but essentially speech also accompanies colors well uh, on one occasion <coughs> you must have heard of it Dilip Kumar Roy wanted to sing to Sri Ram. You know that, no? <laughs> sing, and then uh, he sat in the outside room and sang something there, and Sri Ram was listening to all that thing in his room. And then later on, when he was asked, Sri Ram was asked, and Sri Ram said, "Yes, I could see colors coming down in that music." Many colored speech, voice, colors coming down, and of course, mother says also when she's in the organ, how all, all those flowers and voices come and crowd them. His heart in many colored way with the speech. So he's going to tell now what exactly he is wanting, where he had to move forward. But in response to me, oh golden princess, perfect Savitri. Well, this is not just a phraseology of a lover trying to please his beloved. <laughs> See, they are meeting for the first time. This is not that. She, he sees something very deep and spiritual and beautiful and rich in her, and perfect Savitri. Perfect, he has already recognized in her. That everything is present in her. In fact, in the earlier descriptions of Savitri, we had Satyavan described as a perfect shrine for the god of love. Savitri is described as a perfect shrine for the god of love. Perfect shrine for the god of love. Near to intimate, near to her, intimate heaven. Those lines. I will just show you. At once, she wore a stillness and a word. Stillness and a word. Calm, peace, the creative base and word, the expressive word. Actually, stillness and word in the spiritual sense would convey what is called satyam and rutam. Rutam, word, the dynamic aspect of truth, and the pervasive aspect of truth. Pervasive aspect of truth, 
that is satyam that is stillness and the dynamic aspect of rhythm movement rhythm that is the word expressive word a continent of self diffusing peace and ocean of untimely whirling fire the strength the silence or the god's work of and then this is in her he found the vastness that he owed who is he he the godhead of love he is the one who is seeking a place to dwell here where can he go on earth and dwell this place and he see the sarvati the perfect shrine for that god of love in her he found the vastness like his own his high warm sacred ether he found and moved in her as in his natural home in her he met his own eternity now that is the perfect shrine and that is the perfect savitri oh golden princess perfect savitri perfection sign for the god of love he has already tonight that he wants more i would tell than very words can speak of all that thou hast meant to me and known all that the lightning flash of love revealed yes the lightning flash has come we have made just half an hour ago like the flash has come and it has shown me all the marvelous things but there are more and more things we can speak to you more i would tell than very words can speak of all that thou hast meant to me you are something who will really fulfill my life life on the physical that is most important and known all that the lightning flash of love revealed now the lightning flash is a revealing flash it brings out something from the outer depths from the luminous outer depths something comes out with that lightning flash it is not a blinding flash of love it is not blind your eyes at all it reveals something of very deep nature to you of all that the lightning flash of love revealing in one great hour in one great hour of the unfailing gods even a brief nearness has reshaped my life yes we have been this half an hour ago this is that hour that one hour is enough it has completely changed my life i am now totally different person i was not what i was an hour ago i am now a different person now in one great hour all the unveiling gods the gods are now removed away all the veils which were around me and my life is now a changed life it's a different life for me that is the power of love which is really which is really working in both of them in satyavan as well as in savitri in both of them she has to say something speak more speak more yes he says my life is now changed totally in that one hour this is all that one that is why i was telling you that in uh, shrivandu savitri they are meeting in just for about 3 hours they are recognize the identity each other so there is no question of savitri staying in hermitage for a couple of months or a couple of weeks and they getting acquainted with each other and then deciding to be together it was not necessary we then couple of hours they have recognized their identity and they have decided to be who they are they understood the mediation because something now which has hidden their souls that got open up in the peace of both of them that is important in the peace of both of them more to this moment now now i know that all the new gods move to this moment to my heart rivers i look back on the meaning of myself 
His soul made ready on earth soil for thee. This is a very packed line. But anyway, let's go back to the earlier line first. In one great hour of the unveiling cross. Now, here we have got one great hour. In Savitri, there are a number of descriptions where duration of hour is significant. I got a few examples here, there are more, but let me read some of them. An hour comes when pain or nature's needs. An hour comes when pain or nature's needs. So this is of a different kind of an hour. Now that of an hour comes when pain or nature's needs is what day? 3.6 is there. An hour comes when pain or nature's needs. Means Savitri is alone in the forest on the day of death. Satyavan is about to die. And then she said, an hour comes when all the needs of nature will be fixed. Nothing will remain there. And what will remain will be only the gods above and nature's soul below. They will be the mighty witnesses of this great strife between Savitri and death. That is the hour when all means of nature will fail. Only God above and soul of nature below. They will go to Then we have got here, a seed shall be sown in this tremendous hour. This tremendous hour. A seed shall be sown. Now that is the part of the boon Ashokadi receives from the Divine Mother. He is carried to us. He is come here. Take mortal birth and redeem the God of his mortality. Unless you come, nothing will happen. No change can be. You must take the mortal birth. And then, in response to that, she agrees to come. Well, later on, of course, as Savitri and take the mortal birth. She condescends to pass the portals of the birth that is a death. She agrees with my mother. Yes, unless I take a mortal birth, things cannot change here. And then she said, A seed shall be sown in death, tremendous hour. A tremendous hour, great hour. Then, of course, we have seen earlier, momentous hour. So now they met in that momentous hour. Satyavan and Savitri, they are meeting in the momentous hour. 103.3, a little earlier than what we have seen. 103.3. So, this hour is a very powerful description here. In one great hour of the unveiling gods, it has a totally different spiritual dimension of the entire hour. As if that one hour is carrying in it the entire quintessence of eternity. And it's really carrying the entire substance, contents of eternity in that one hour. In one great hour, that is what great would mean. Even a brief nearness has reshaped my life. Naturally, once that hour is carrying that eternity's content, life has to change if you are responsible. For now I know that all I knew, was and was move to this moment of my heart's rebirth. I am reborn not here. I have become Dvija. That is what the Vedic Pandit would say. Dvija means second birth. Second birth of him has occurred here. He has become Dvija. My heart's rebirth. I look back on the meaning of myself and then he says, a soul made ready on earth's soil for the. Now, this is too awkward, too deep <laughs> for us really to uh, even look at it. But it only means that 
such a preparation is carried over long periods of time, over centuries, over eons, it does not happen today. A soul made ready, we have seen earlier, a rare the cup fit for love's nectar wine. Yes, rare the cup. Now to prepare that rare cup, it takes long time. A soul made ready on earth's soil for the necessities for you. In other words, soil for the, for the, what is she going to do? Her mission, you have already described. Her mission is concerned with the body. Her mission is concerned with the body. Yes, my soul is free, etc., etc., all that thing. But what about my body? That is the mission. And if that has to be fulfilled, then it is for that fulfillment. Yes, now I am ready. I have matured up now that you can really bring about physical transformation in me. You can do that. I have now really advanced that point because a child born in the void, he says, no, he should be God. The child born in the void has come to a point now that he has to become a God. And it has taken long yogas, long periods of time to come to this point. Now it is there in your hand. The physical transformation of me is in your hand. It is now ready. You are the possessor of this physical being of me. Once and now, of course, this is the meaning, but in the general context, he also tells how his soul got ready. Well, he has taken the human birth now at this particular moment of time and how through various stages he has passed and come to this point of realization. That is what now he is going to narrate here. The first thing which he says that once were my days like days of other men. Yes, I lived like a common man until yesterday. Enjoy life, do this, do that, earn money, luxury, whatever is required. Well, I am doing until now. To think and act was all. That's all. Means I was a fully grown mental being and I enjoyed only mental life until now. As a Manusha, as a Manava, as a mental being. You see. To enjoy and be, that was all for me. This was the width and height mortal soul. In other words, he said that I have now outgrown the stage of mortality. I am ready now to put myself in your hand. And you take possession of it and bring about the true change, the true transformation. Yet there came glimpses of a deeper self. Although I was leading a normal human life, a common man's life and all that thing, still something used to kind of spring up from me, arise from me, jump up from me. That leaves behind life and makes her act is seen. There is something which leaves behind life and makes her act. Her stands for life. Her stands for life. That leaves behind life and makes life's act is seen. Is stands for self. Life's acts become now the scenes of the self. Means the self is entering into the dynamic of my life. Yet there came glimpses of a deeper self that lives behind life and makes her act its scene. A truth was felt in the strange shape from mine. Yes, I was feeling that truth. But there was already a veil of mind. And therefore, I could not really see the true truth. It was only a mental representation of truth that I was glimpsing until now. A grain is worthy towards a hidden end. Yes, within me, there was somebody else who was constantly working in me. Hidden end. And vaguely into the forms of earth, there looks something that life is not. And yet, must be. So when I see all the creatures around, 
the trees, the mountains, rivers, animals, birds, bees. When I see them, man, even the grown up people, advanced people, rishis, accomplished, spiritually accomplished people, and all that, what was it? Life is not, and yet must be, the something has to do. And then he says, he says, no, that leaves me, well, he was, he is now narrating in a certain sense, in the descriptive sense, a soul made ready. He is sort of narrating now that way, a soul made ready. How it is being made? Yes, everywhere have you seen that thing, you see. A truth was spelled, a spell is saved from mind. A greatness working towards a hidden end. And vaguely to the palms of earth, there looks something that life is not. And yet must be. Yes, that greatness has to come in life. But it is not there, unfortunately. It has to come. It has to come. And my hope is that you have come and it will happen. I go for the mystery. What is this mystery of life and death or this existence? Life is there, but it is also accompanied by death. Why? What is the mystery behind that? Is there a meaning behind that? I was looking for the answer. I was looking for philosophies or speculations. All the other things I have seen, the titles I have read, darshanas I have read, Everything are it, how to do this system. But only with the help of a mind of thought, which is a lantern. It is that lamp which I was carrying, and with that I was looking for the truth in this night, for that mystery. I broke the mystery with the lantern. Thought, thought is a lantern. Yes. It's glimmering, it's lighted, the abstract world. So, what do I see? Only in abstract philosophies, metaphysics. We thought that is all I can do. The real truth, what is the pressure of it, that I know. I can also do that. A half visible ground and traveling yard by yard, it mapped the system of self and God. That is what the metaphysics have done. That is what the darshanas have done. Yard by yard, they are describing the system. All the metaphysics, the spiritual philosophies, that is what they have done. Map system of self. Yes, all great things. Only with the help of thought we discuss and try to understand and appreciate those things. And God also we bring in the compass of thought. I could not live the truth he spoke and thought. That was my unfortunate Yes, I was looking for those answers, but I was not able to get those answers from them. What is God? That is the first thing we do. I turn, alright, thought, it does not take me. Then what is our time? I turn to see this form in visible thing, this form, or that self, or that reality, or that truth. We talk to the truth. In everywhere, I was trying to see the truth in things around me, hoping to fix its room by a mortal mind. Because that is my best instrument of cognition. I can understand things only with the help of my mind. That is the best instrument of understanding, of cognition. And with that, I was trying to understand these things and to not. Modern mind imposed a narrow structure of world law. So, we, with our prisons, we had even intuitions also sometimes, but they, again, they get trapped into those things. Imposed a narrow structure of law, world law, upon the freedom of the infinite. A hard, warm skeleton of outward truth. So ultimately what happens? You only see the outer thing, outer aspect of the truth. Yes, you take oxygen and hydrogen, mix them up with water. What is that you have really understood? <laughs> Nothing. You're not really. You have really gone the process, all right. You have taken oxygen and hydrogen, you have made water. But what has really happened behind that thing? Of that you have no understanding at all. So all our sciences, all our knowledge, all our the systems of measurement and all that thing, they fall short of that capacity of understanding. See, we have got different faculties, discernment, inspiration, in, sorry, discernment, intuition, then uh, inspiration, and then revelation. That is how we can go on the spiritual things. By discernment, we can understand what is truth and all that thing. Then you also have the power of intuition of grasping, getting something. 
we sometimes get revelations also of those things. Yet the truth is not there. Some flashes do come out, and Einstein suddenly gets an idea from some pair. Yes, it was miracles, but ultimately there is no truth contained in that. It becomes a theory, it becomes a philosophy, it becomes a mental way of understanding, all over matter, it has a certain power also to penetrate into the depth of matter and do things with matter, but still it is incapable of really doing things. He says, impose the narrow structure of world law upon the freedom of the infinite, a hard firm skeleton of outward truth, a mental scheme of a mechanic power. That is the physical nature, mechanic power. It is that I can understand that thing, how things happen. This light showed more the darknesses unsearched. Yes, I was looking for answer, I was looking for truth, but what do I find? I find that in the film is more and more dark. It is not only this region, but it is also this region. Everywhere, how things happen, that I don't understand. It made the original secrecy more awkward. It has deepened rather that secrecy. As I give you the example, you take two chemicals, you produce a third chemical. How it has happened? Is it a magic? Is it a miracle? How it has happened? On that, I have no clue. You can produce different chemicals in all that thing by whatever mechanism thing, but the real thing which takes place between them of that we have no understanding at all. In fact, that's the whole problem. How life is formed. See, by combining two units, you make a third unit. By combining many more units, you make a bigger aggregate. All right. But how that has happened, what is it that really binds them together of that I have no knowledge, of that I have no feeling knowledge at all. You can keep on reading of those things, but the real knowledge, in other words, there has to be some kind of bigger behind it to uh, put it in a slightly different manner. We can say that Agni. He is a form builder. He is the one who makes forms. Now, how Agni can enter into the material process and bring about different forms of that I don't have knowledge. I know that it is Agni who is the binding force, who is also the builder of forms. Agni is the builder of forms. How it happens that I don't know. Therefore, in fact, this is a much deeper question. Secrecy more often how the body is formed. In fact, there are very beautiful videos of the birth of a child coming from the womb of the mother. How the conception, this is a, how the conception takes place and how the baby really grows the womb. Very, very beautiful. But ultimately, how it happens? Is it a kind of mechanical way by which things happen? And it is done with such perfection. It's such perfection, completely. It's done such perfection, all the time. How it happen? Agni is the way of Agni. How he works there in hand and how that I know not. I would like to know that. If I know that, then I can say how I can build up a new body. A new body for the spirit to come and live. If I have to know the chemistry of that thing, I must study that thing, I must know that thing. New body can be built only by Agni. It is the Agni's power who will build up the new physical body, the transformed body. It is he who will do How that is going to happen? I am not. Therefore, it has become a secret to me. And the mother was, was, was concerned with that secrecy more often. And in one of the places she says that it is the psychic being which will make the new body. Psychic being, the fire, ugly, it is he who will make the new body. How that is going to happen? Mother says, sorry, I have no knowledge of it at the moment. She herself says, 
that knowledge is not yet given to me, but it is for man what I am wanting. So it becomes ocean secrecy more popular, more deep, more profound. And on a mental brain, the thought of it could not analyze its cosmic ways or blame the wonder worker's hidden hand and trace the pattern of his magic plan. My mind, my thought, my instruments of cognition, they cannot understand those things at the moment. And therefore, I give up all those spiritual pursuits of knowledge and I try to go within whether I can find something which will help me to understand the truth. I plant into an inner seeing mind. I go into my inner being now and try to understand with the help of not the spiritual mind, but with the inner mind. And knew the secret laws and secrecy that make of matter's mind bewildered slave. The mind of matter becomes a slave of those laws. How does that happen? That I would like to know by plunging into the depths of my being, into the inner being, by entering into the inner mind. The mystery was not solved, but deepened more. I strove to find the saint through beauty and art. So all those things have gone, the spiritual pursuit, the mental pursuit, the metaphysical pursuit, the inner pursuit, the upper pursuit, they are filled. I am looking now for arts. Aesthetics of joy, of beauty, of love. I'm looking at them whether they can help me in some manner. So this is a very, very peculiar kind of a courtship speech. <laughs> he is he is courting the girl and he's talking about all these things. <laughs> I strove to find this thing through beauty and art, through form. But form cannot unveil the indwelling power. This the structure looks extremely absolutely beautiful. But how the power has entered into that, I don't know. I have created a very beautiful image of a god, of Ganesha, of Buddha, whatever you call it, or of uh, Athena, statue of Mahayana But how the power has entered into it, how the Prana Pratishta, how that got established in it, I don't understand that. You see, that I don't understand. That. I strove to find his thing through beauty and art, but form cannot unveil the indwelling power, only it throws the samples at our hearts. It evoked a mood of self, invoked a sign of all the glory, glory in sense. I lived in the rain, but faced not the sun. Yes, through the aesthetics. Through the aspiration of the soul, through the expression of the soul, I have reached certain kind of a spiritual revelation. I have obtained a sort of a spiritual revelation and all that. But the real sun behind that, that I cannot understand. Yes, they got Renaissance art, they have got beautiful statues and all that, they have got wonderful caves, where are those things? Yes, all those things there. How behind it, what happened? All that I can't say. I missed the sun. I looked upon the world. So that is this art and aesthetics, they have also failed. Metaphysics has failed, science has failed, inner occult knowledge also has failed. Everything has failed. Now when I looked upon failed in the sense that they have remained incomplete. They have achieved something. They have made some advances all right, but the real fulfillment which I want that I am not getting to. In that sense, they are you know, remain incomplete. I looked upon the world and missed the self. Well, this is what he is saying, that, that is what the materialist will do. He will see the material world all around, everywhere, but the self behind it, God behind it, is absent. He is talking of now here, basically, the denial of the materialist. In the right mind, I got those two chapters the denial of the materialist and the refusal of the ascetic. The ascetic will not accept matter, the materialist will deny spirit. So, that is the dichotomy which now Satyavan is facing. I looked upon the world and missed the self. 
If I accept this world, that is gone. And when I found the self, I lost the world. My other self they lost, and the body of God, that is the most precious thing for me. The body of God I lost. The blame, but the finite, the infinite, what is here, what is there, that connection, that bridge, the dying link, that is not there. We have not created that hyperlink, as you say today's language. That hyperlink is not present. You click the hyperlink and then you open out the window straight away. That is not the now true. My other self has lost and the body of God, the link, the finite, the infinite, the bridge between the appearance and the truth. So, either this world appears illusion and that is the reality or that as a dream and a hallucination and this physical world or so that link I have been mis missing all along. The mystic aim for which the world was made, the world was made for not nothing. It has its purpose. It is not by abandoning the world that you get true realization, you get complete realization. After all, you have to also find the presence of divine in this world also. That I am not able to see that. Otherwise, what is the world here for? Night is here for what? Night is here so that the divine can be seen in the depths of night also. I should be able to see that. It is not there for nothing. It has a certain purpose. The body of God. Oh, body of God. Yeah. Uh, uh, my other self is lost in the body of God. See, that is what it wants. The spiritual body is not sufficient. I want the physical body, the God Himself, with the physical here. There's a supramental body. The supramental of yeah. course, here. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. 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 My other self is lost in the body of God. That's the only possibility here. That I'm not coming here. I know the world. The link, He says now. Finite, infinite, that connection is not there. The bridge between the appearance and the truth. And then, of course, earlier I said, see the golden bridge, the wonderful fire. Mm -hmm. She will bridge the finite and infinite. The dichotomy which is there, it is she will remove that thing. You know. And can you explain more the other selves? The other selves. Other selves. Which one? Found the self, I lost the world. My other selves. <laughs> many, many. Well, see, uh, uh, it is a plural. I got everything here. My physical self is there, my mental self is there, my vital self is there. Ah, All these things are there. I am a Manumaya Purusha, I am a Nakanamaya Purusha. All these things are there. Myself, like in everybody, all living beings. Yes. Those are my other selves. Those are my other selves. You are my other self. You are my other self. You are my other self. Yes, but here it's not my other selves. Not for others alone. But in my, within myself also. Within myself also. I lost the world. My other self I lost. The bridge between the appearance and the truth. Yeah. The mystic aim for which the world was made. So the world is made with a purpose, definitely. It is not a fortuitous world. Without any meaning, without any content. And that purpose has been destroyed. In fact, he is essentially telling us what Shepard's philosophy of existence is. The human sense of immortality. Now, this is again another very deep phrase. Human sense of immortality. There is also the divine sense of immortality. There is also the divine sense of immortality. She says, Look, I want human sense of immortality. The divine sense, yes, all the gods are there, all the transcendental things are there, and they are immortal. Always drinking Amrita, all right. But here, when he sees human sense of immortality, it means that it is not, so to say, a frozen immortality of the gods. The gods are there, they are immortal, 
etc. etc. all of that, but they do not progress. They remain as they are. They don't have a psychic being for to progress. They may. Whereas humans sense that psychic is just a constant progress for going further and further and further. And it is that human sense of immortality through the psychic growth. It is that I want. I insist upon that. I insist upon that. That is the privilege of the earth beings that we are receiving. Human sense, this is a very packed phrase. Human sense of immortality, the constant, ceaseless progress in evolution, which is guaranteed to us because of the psychic thing. It is that what I want here. In other words, even if the supermind comes here, it does not mean that the progress is stopped. Obviously not. In other words, the progress will be now. In the world of knowledge, more and more possibilities and potentialities of the spirit will come into expression. It is that immortality which is what I want. In a certain sense, you can say there is a difference, what the mother also said, between deathlessness and immortality. Deathlessness and immortality. Now, I don't want it to do I want deathlessness. In other words, if I want to live, we want to change, that change is there with me, that capacity is there with me. Deathlessness does not mean that I die because of death, but because of my will, because of my desire, because of my necessity, I change something from something. That is the human sense of immortality. I become deathless. It gives me more power, more capacity to do things in a different way of me. If a certain purpose is served by this form, I can keep it aside and still make progress. You see. For now, under them draws near with thee. Now he is coming back to Savitri because of this difficulty. I see here and another world is now dying in front of me. And now, diviner voices fill my ears. I was listening to divine voices always, right. but now diviner voices are coming. I was listening to divine voices. A strange new world springs to me in thy day. You are looking at me, but I don't see it like that. I see something new happening. Strange to me in time. All those prospects which I was looking for, it is those which are now shining out from your eyes. A strange view is strange to me in time, approaching like a star from unknown heaven. From where they are coming, I do not know. But these two new worlds are coming in front of me. A cry of spheres comes with thee. And a song of craving gods. I draw a radial breath and in a five year march of moments move. So that is my progression. Suddenly, it has now started moving also because in her gaze, she sees the arrival of a new world. In her gaze, that is the power of love which has really got awakened in him. That my simply looking at her, a new world is appearing in the same. And then we have got one of the most beautiful lines in Savitri, most artistic line. My mind transfigures to a rapturous seer. Yes, until now my mind was kind of instrument of thought, knowledge, and all that thing. But now that it was seer. We start seeing, there we going to receive like you see, see it. Rapturous, happy, joyous, see it. And he says, now, uh, in terms of poetic construction, transfigures. He uses, my mind transfigures. He uses the word, word, word transfigure as intransitive word in his mind. In fact, transfigure is a 
transitive work. It leaves an object. There is no object in this life. And he has taken that tremendous poetic liberty of converting a transitive work into an intransitive work. And the power with which the poem comes, the line comes, is absolutely remarkable. My mind transfigures to a rapturous sphere. Suddenly it has changed into a sphere now. And see the alliterations also are, 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 are only as this line. My mind transfigures to a rapturous sphere. And poetically we say, my mind transfigures to a rapturous sphere. That is the beauty. First is Naya, second thing is also Naya, third is Spirit, then again Naya, and that is. That is how the meter is given. My mind transmits to a rapturous year, a holy practice. So, therefore, you see, this poem is very alert about the language, different here about the grammatical rules also. It, it, it is super superior, this kind of a liberty of speech, absolutely. Shakespeare would say, there are there are daggers in a smile. Okay. Yeah, daggers in a smile. Daggers in a smile. Yeah. <laughs> it is that kind of boldness which comes out here. There are daggers in a smile. It is, it is that kind of boldness which comes out here. My mind transfigures to the back of the sea. If only traveling from the waves of bliss had changed my heart and changed the earth around me. Now that is the most miraculous thing. He does not see that only he has changed, but her presence has brought a change all around here. The whole of nature has changed because of us. It is he who is changed. And as Savitri herself is not aware of it. But this man, the boy, what is to see? And change my heart and change the earth around me. All the thy coming filled. Air, yeah, soil, and spring, where dry remain to be fit for thee, and sunlight grow the shadow of the hue. Because of change in me, thy by thy do. Now he is already speaking of the bridal remain. See, he is in the love speech also. He is reading in verses also. See, has changed my heart and changed the earth around. So it is not the. Uh, uh, Glorification of love, it is not that he is uh, making false advances. He is talking of reality also. Things are really changed around. Has changed my heart and changed the earth around. Now, only when this is what happens also in the case of a common uh, marriage, everything changes around. But it's not that, it's something of a different type of this. We have had a remain to be fit for the, and these remains are so rich. So beautiful, so gorgeous that even sunlight becomes a shadow. <laughs> they are so bright. Because of change within me, my dialogue, come nearer to me from thy car of life. Yes, you are driving in the car of life. We have seen earlier, this is the time he is speaking of car of life. In the earlier description, car one car. The poet was describing Savitri was driving in Karvanta in the Mahavarata story with the golden chariot, Hemaratha. He speaks of Hemaratha, golden chariot. Here is the car of light. On the green spot, standing, not our soil. Yes, you have come all the way as far as here. Please come down. Don't disown this place. Disdain the soil of God. For here are secret spaces made for thee. This is the place for you, fit place for you. Whose caves of emerald long to spring that form. Yes, all the trees that are there, they will protect you. You will be living under those caves. Here are secret spaces made for thee. Secret spaces made for thee. It is a kind of a premonition. The, in the mind of Satyavan, it's kind of, you know, it is for the, here the great event will occur. Here the new thing will begin. The 
can do what you can to okay. in your look it is that which is starting <coughs> to your and therefore it is a secret space fit for the for you in fact it is here exactly at this point one year after our meeting today satyavan will die and new life will begin secret spaces make fit for the is there she will exercise her full dynamic power shakti and devote it of shakti to that whose scales of emerald long strain the form will thou not make this mortal bliss thy spear yes i know that you are a heavenly person you are deva kanya you are the daughter of the gods deva kanya i know that but will you not accept this mortal life and be with us here will you not come to my house and stay with us we are the solicitor here will thou not make this mortal bliss thy spear descend o oh, happiness with thy moon gold feet and this earth flows upon whose feet we lie make this place this soil your soil descend on sun you are riding the chariot you are sitting the chariot please come down from the chariot <laughs> this is what he is telling you short sir come down from the chariot you are moving with the car of light come down from the car of light to this mortal soil what is it moon gold feet i think it is a kind of a reference to moon gold i don't know exactly but mythologically in the western mythology moon gold has some kind of a connection i don't know whether you know or not moon gold in the greek mythology there is some connection here about moon gold feet it has a reference to that i like to add it out also so this is not just a phrase basically it has some uh, echo of the earlier mythology moon gold feet oh happiness with thy moon gold feet and its earth flows upon whose feet will lie now there is a little problem here but let us first uh, uh, quickly take the last two sentences oh my beauties bright beauties princess savitri by my delight and by own joy compelled yes you will be compelled by your own joy to be here enter my life thy chamber and thy shrine now until now we have seen that savitri was the shrine for satyavan He was the perfect shrine for the God of Love to go in this life. Now he is saying, "I am the shrine for you. Enter my life, that chamber, and thy shrine. My life is shrine for you. You will be the goddess in my house, in my shrine. You will dwell in my soul. You will dwell in my soul here. So that is the kind of reversal we are taking." Until now, Satyavan, sorry, Savitri was the shrine for the god of love. But now he himself, the god of love, is making him a shrine for the goddess of beauty. Yes. In the great quiet and still space, me, led by my hushed desire into my woods, let the dim rolling arches over the hilly. So he is talking of now his surrounding. The trees are there, the scenery are there. It is in this house, in this place. He will come and say, "Let the dim rustling arches over thee live, one with the breath of things eternal live." And that is the beauty of it. Yes, we will be here, but still we will live in the company of the eternal. We are here. Thy heart is near to mine, till there shall be. Enchanted from the fragrance of the flower, a moment which all murmurs shall recall, and every bird remember its in its cry. Well, that is a romantic picture, but it is how he is now making advances to Savitri. He is inviting Savitri to come down from her chariot and walk to 
this final space BCP. Now here we have descend all happiness to die moon gold peak. H here is capital. Happiness. In the revised edition, H is small. H is small. Descend all happiness to thy moon gold peak. H happiness, H is small here. Well, we don't know what the history behind it, but it is there. And it is unfortunate that we are left without any hint how that change has taken place where it is beginning. But I must only say that this is something which cannot happen by itself. From H to cap, from small H to capital H. Nobody will come and interfere and do it and tell it. How it will happen that this is we don't know. But that really needs to be looked into properly. In fact, uh, why I am referring to this one is because earlier we had something which is there in the first speech of Satyavan. Yeah, here. A shape of magic white, it's, he's talking about words and animals and kick around you know, in the first description of uh, 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 of Satyavan Saiban and your Savitri. A shape of magic white is sailed through grey. In fact, the two sentences here. I part for some eternal eye, sudden Indian fisher, flashing into a darkling pool. What we saw last time. A slow swan, silvery in the azure lake, a shape of magic whiteness, sailed through grain, leaves trembling with the passion of the wind, and wandering wings nearing from infinity, live in the tablets of my inner sight. Mountains and trees stood there like thoughts from God. And then next sentence. Frank butterflies, the conscious flowers of air, the brilliant long winds in their vivid dress, the peacocks scattering with the breeze is moon, can read my memory like a crystal wall. Now, uh, well, this is a little minor thing. The brilliant long bills, here long bills are two separate words, but the revised edition has hyphenated it, long bills. It is long hyphen bills. It is a compound word. Well, again, I would not know the history of that. But the other change is something which is of a very serious kind. See this line prank butterfly, the conscious flowers of air has been shifted in the revised edition three lines earlier. It comes here, lives trembling with the passion of the wind, frank but applied with conscious flowers of the air. It has gone up there in the revised edition. And then, nearing from infinity. What we hear is nearing from infinity. Uh, what is proposed in the revised edition is rather is the revised edition in blue infinity. In blue infinity. The line prank butterflies had been shifted earlier, and that uh, nearing from infinity is in the revised edition blue in blue infinity. Now it seemed that there was some miscopy. Rather, it's not miscopy. Now, there was an arrow pointing in the manuscripts to shift the line prank butterflies three lines earlier. There was an arrow. That arrow was missed, but when it was typed out, then Shevendu corrected that blue infinity in blue infinity by dictation. Says in blue infinity to 
bearing from infinity. He dictated that thing as it changed from row infinity in row infinity to bearing from infinity. He dictated that change to infinity. Now, when he has made that specific change at the last minute, it means that he has approved also not shifting the tank line earlier. Yeah. We have followed. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Obviously, because he is, he is reading now like this, and he says, okay, only that phase is changed. Mm -hmm. So when he has approved in this form like this, whether we should go back to <laughs> the earlier manuscript or not, that is a debatable question. That is a debatable question. And I will say that we have no business to change what is there, finally approved. As Pope knows, you say this happened, that happened, that happened, that happened, that happened, that happened, that happened. You can keep on narrating those stories later on. You narrate those stories separately. But don't change now what has been finally approved. So the same thing, the same whole happiness. 